the internet that we use, mm. the, the world of Google, is the tip of the iceberg. Absolutely. If you think of the internet as being an iceberg, what we tend to use on a day-to-day -day basis, searching for information and news, is above the sea. What's below the sea, which is far greater because it's the iceberg, is the dark web. Over three million people worldwide use the dark web a day. So it's massive, massive. Now, there are some elements of the dark web which are used legally. Journalists tend to use it in war-torn countries to communicate uh, and share information because, of course, they don't want other people to know who they are and where they are. But it is now massively used for illegal activity. Whatever you want, you can get on the dark web. I mean, is there, when you went through those, that customer from TalkTalk and they had all those details, what are they doing with those? What can be done once they've got that information? What are you open to? So what happens is that person there had put one sample detailed up. So they, what they are saying in their communication is that this has been got from the TalkTalk Talk hack recently. This is one sample. If you want to obtain more, you put in the numbers that you want. It's just like an auction site. It's a buying auction site. You put in the numbers you want. If you wanted a thousand users' details, and that provides you full name, email address, date of birth, bank account details. So if you wanted to purchase something online, you've got all the information you need, that would cost you $457 so you for 1,000 pieces of you, information. You could buy, so using all of those details, you've got pretty much all you need to know then to, what, to, to buy a car? As long as you Nick did it online, obviously, pers uh, to go into it, you'd have to perhaps show some identification, you'd be a person, but purchasing online, so you could go online, you could buy a new TV, you could go and buy, you know, small numbers. What tends to happen is fraudsters use small numbers rather than large numbers because you attract less attention. So a couple of couple of questions. How, how do you how do you pay for, for, for stuff that you if you are online, uh, then as soon as you assume give your bank details, mm. then everybody knows. Apart from the fact you're probably giving your bank de details someone shady in the first place. Yep. How do you pay? Well, you pay by simply using the bank account details. So you've got your account number, you've got the sort code. So if someone's asking you for that information, you can give that information. Now, there are some purchases that you buy, you might need your verification number, which is the number on the back of your credit card, but not for everything. So there, and the, the fraudsters know where they can go and buy things without having to No, but have what that. about buying stuff? If you, if you, you say that the dark web can be used for anything you can right. buy anything so yeah, if yeah. i wanted to buy and let's make it ridiculous because yes. we can talk about small handguns of course yeah. but if i wanted to buy a submarine yes then how am i going to pay for it how do how do you pay on the dark web oh sorry yes yeah, so there, there is a bitcoins which is a form of payment so it's a um it's a currency that's accepted on the internet okay it's a currency where you buy it and then you you pay by bitcoins so there's a transfer in terms of taking place you buy this currency and then you pay with this currency so it's all untraceable basically uh, the whole of the dark web that's the problem it's untraceable it's fine to buy something and i get that but what about delivering it or picking it up you'd think that wouldn't it be easy to kind of you if you were the police you'd say right well i tell you what well i'm going to order this gun yeah. and you're going to drop it off or i'm going to pick it up and as soon as i see who it is i'm going to go all right you're nicked well that, and that's of course the thing is the dark web provides anonymity because you bounce between different computers okay in a very simplistic way so when you are on home it's between you and your own server and people can identify you because the dark web creates this this myriad of different connections in between you can't trace the the, the user okay so that's the first thing and because the large majority of stuff that's being done is illegal, of course, they need to be able to make that delivery in a way that they can't get caught. Please just turn up at address and find out who it is. So again, they build in drop drop-off points and those drop-off points could be a location that's as, as, uh, as open as a, a cafe. Uh, or it could be a specific address. So these drop-off points and they change constantly. And you say that, uh, that it's a, a little bit like a dark web eBay. You can buy stuff and you get a rating. Yes, no. I got my gun really quickly. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can buy a Walter PPK 9mm, $568. That's being sold by a UK seller now. And, of course, that's illegal. It's being sold by a UK seller. I could buy that and it could be dropped off. Uh, and absolutely everything, so you, absolutely everything you want can be obtained. So how do you protect yourself from it. I'm assuming there's once you're on the dark web, there's nothing you can do about that. The problem is, it's the people that is, whose information appears on the dark web. So we did it focused specific, specifically around TalkTalk, Talk, and the issue was, of course, is can your information end up on being on the dark web being sold to other people? And we've shown that it can. So some of the small little tips I would say is, first of all, 
two-step authentication. So that means that you can go to any of these websites who use Facebook, Twitter, you know, any of the bank things. And what it does is through the account setting on that site, go into it, and then you can input two-step uh, authentication. And what that means is that you will get a number that will come to your mobile phone, oh. six digits, comes to your mobile phone, and as well as putting your password in, you then have to put that unique number in, okay? And it only lasts. So I would say to anybody, it's very simple, right? Go to the site that it's on. If you are quite techy, you can actually download a Google app, which allows you to do that. And you can do that for every other site. A couple of other little tips is check your bank accounts regularly, right? You can set up notifications as far as when withdrawals are made so you know if people are taking money out of your account. And what tends to happen is these people take small numbers out of your bank account, not massive ones. So you wouldn't necessarily know and the bank might not notify you yeah. because it's only a small number. Um, and the other things is change your, your passwords regularly. Just be really aware of the information. And some of the things that, that people are still falling foul to is emails being sent to you, right? What ends up happening is some of these people will send you an email. Part of that email will have a Trojan horse or something in it that once you click on it, it's into all your information, all your information on your computer. Never click an email from someone you do not know. <laughs>